Syracuse, New York, Kelly Bryan lies still on the ground with four athletic trainers hovering over him, the Clemson quarterback seemingly helpless and badly shaken. He had been trying to protect himself all night. He tried running around against Syracuse on a gimpy ankle. He tried to convince Clemson coaches they were right to play him despite the reality that he had rolled his ankle just six days earlier against Wake Forest. But this was it. It was the second quarter of Clemson's eventual 2,724 loss against Syracuse. Bryant had been tackled so hard by defensive lineman Chris Slayton and had been so unequipped to protect himself that he was left concussed. For the first time all night, the raucous carrier dome fell silent. For the first time all season, Bryant couldn't do his part to pick up the Tigers when they needed it, and their season essentially hung in the balance. It foreshadowed what was to come later in the night, a stunning Clemson loss that leaves the Tigers with all sorts of questions and no immediate answers. I'm so happy for you, Swinney told Syracuse coach Dino Babers in the aftermath of it all. Y'all deserve this. The Tigers tried to get creative. After Syracuse led 70 in the first quarter, the game was followed by a 77 tie, a 147 Syracuse lead, a 14 14 tie, a 17 14 Syracuse lead, a 17 17 tie, a 2417 Syracuse lead, a 2424 tie, and a 2724 Syracuse lead, until at last that score stuck. Backup quarterback Zarek Cooper was told that he would be first off the bench in the event Bryant could not go and he said he noticed that Bryant was limping in the second quarter. Cooper, who said he got tons of work this week rotating with the first and second teams, took over for the injured Bryant and Clemson was given a flash of life when freshman running back Travis Etienne jetted into the end zone on a 52-yard run to tie it at 24 in the third. But on Clemson's next possession after the Syracuse field goal, the Tigers opted to try a fake punt. Hunter Will Spears took the snap and threw downfield to safety Tanner Muse. There were 6 minutes and 10 seconds left. It was unsuccessful, Dabo Swinney was irate and Clemson wouldn't score again. The Tigers looked more befuddled, more sloppy and more out of sync than they have at any point in the season, and it came at the worst time for a team looking to make another playoff run. Clemson racked up an abysmal 11 penalties for 119 yards, accumulated just 16 first downs to Syracuse's 28 and only converted two times on 11 third down opportunities. The Tigers never led, we understand that we play to a standard here and maybe we should be realizing that we're going to get everybody's best, defensive end Clellan Farrell said. When we don't play to our standard, which is the best, then other teams' best can be better than our standard we play to. Clemson's defense struggled equally, which came as a surprise given how dominant Brent Venable's unit has been this year and how hard it has been for other teams to rattle it. Clemson's secondary knew it had its hands full with Syracuse wide receiver Steve Ishmael, the nation's leader in receiving yards, and his partner Irvin Phillips, yet the Tigers had few answers. Phillips had four receptions for 94 yards and a touchdown, while Ishmael had six catches for 73 yards and a score of his own. From the defensive line to the secondary, with each series the Tigers only grew more frustrated. The obvious question moving forward is where this leaves Clemson and whether the Tigers will be eligible to contend for the college football playoff now. How the rest of the conference shakes out remains to be seen and there is still time to make up ground. But unlike the loss last year to Pittsburgh, this is a divisional loss for Clemson. That complicates matters greatly. NC State is now in control of the ACC Atlantic Division and Clemson will have to be perfect. We don't pay attention to the outside, but we know we're going to get that pressure from the outside sources because we know that's what everyone's going to say that we're not the team everybody thought we were, Farrell said. But we know that all of our goals are still on the table. Everything that we want to achieve is still on the table. When Friday's game was over, the Carrier Dome went bonkers with fans whipping out their cell phones to document the biggest upset of the college football season. Music blasted. Syracuse players hugged, strangers celebrated and Swinney paced. Students rushed the field and a single orange balloon fell from the rafters. It was the marquee win of Baber's career, the Orange's signature win they were so desperately craving. Dino was outstanding, and you can just see it kind of coming, Swinney said earlier this week. This is going to be a really tough division opponent for many years as long as he is there, Swinney knows that firsthand now. Follow Grace Rayner on Twitter at Gum Rayner.